Hello my friend, we can now die and we can reset our game. Game over is shown here, we did in the previous lecture, but the goal of our game is gonna be to survive as long as we can. There will be many goblins respawning, okay? We're gonna write code that will like respawn goblins in random places in future. But we need to track the time, how long the player survives right so he can make some kind of records so this game has any fun feature in it so how do we count in godot firstly let's create a canvas layer let's call it head up display which is just gonna show on top of our game information like for example score the amount of hp for our player and in our case, in this lecture, it's gonna show the timer, how long somebody survived, okay? And we're gonna choose canvas layer because it's gonna be on top of the interface that we have now. And now let's create your label. Let's call it survived time label. So it is self-descriptive and we are gonna type here survived time, for example, zero at start, right? And uh, well, let's play it. As you can see, we have survived time here. Let's make it a bit bigger. So let's make it, for example, 30 pixels. And let's also go to layout and to the transform. And let's put, for example, 10 pixels on X axis. So it's not like st stuck to the left side. And we want to increase it every second. How do we increase something every second? We have got a node that is called timer. and. As the name suggests, it is a countdown timer. How does it work? You have got here a property that says wait time. It means that this timer is gonna wait one second and after one second, what will happen? It will inform anybody who is listening to the signal called timeout. And this function is gonna be executed that will, you know, listen to the timeout. So uh, let's call it survived time timer. And well, we need a script here, right? So we can, uh, so we are able to attach it to something. And now let's attach timeout to our head up display like this. Okay, let's test it out. Let's print here, for example, test. And when I play it, notice that there is nothing on output. R why? Because you need to like start the timer and you can do it from code or you can auto start it. So now, as you can see, we have test one time, two times, three times. So the test shows up every second because timer is waiting one second and then the timeout uh, signal signals everybody who is listening to the timeout and the function that listens to it is on su survive time timer timeout, which invokes, executes test, right? And it happens every second. If I did it one shot, it means that it's gonna happen only once and that's all it finished working okay but we want it to work forever right every second that's great we learned something very important in this lecture right we know how to count <laughs> but how do we change now uh, the value let's create here for example a variable that we'll call survived um, time and let's assign to it zero at start okay and here instead we're gonna print now survive time but let's increase it before by one this means that we're gonna increase it from zero to one and in one second when this invokes it's gonna be again increased by one and again and again so the value here now in the output as you can see is one two three four five and it goes up so that's what we want but we need to somehow update this value here how do we access this value here to access it we're gonna put it like using the control here and now we can just do something like that this then access text and type here survived time right and afterwards uh, we can put the value uh, like we have here zero so we can put the survive time uh, which is gonna be like this 
Ah, okay. Uh, we need to also say uh, what type is the survive time, and it is digit. Let's see how it. Uh, as you can see, it did it this way. The percent D, because it means that put survive time into this place, and this is a digit. So as you can see now, it increases here. One, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. So. I ask AI how to do it, right? So I ask enter survive time into the game using uh, the head up display, which will pre represent how long the player survived before dying. And the timer is supposed to update every one second until player dies. And it solves it properly. But the problem with AI is that it tries to connect things like manually it's because it doesn't know what we did using the graphical user interface right so it tries to do things manually and uh, you need to be careful when copying things like that because you already did it with me for example using graphical interface right so sometimes you could even ask for more specific questions right not to ask for everything but for specific questions and it's good to understand the process behind that's why learning to code is still important right otherwise uh, you can uh, for example copy things from here that are not even needed and uh, it will just bloat your code it will be uh, just too much 